Dr. Drew, phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. Dr. Drew, board-certified physician, addiction medicine specialist. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Lindsay Bartleson is our guest tonight. She is the uh, beautiful redhead from Grounded for Life, which uh, is uh, now switching from uh, Fox to the uh, WB Friday nights on, uh, well, we're not sure the time yet. <laughs> I imagine it's going to be somewhere between 7 and 10. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Good bet. Around 9, I think. But yeah. 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 Well, I mean, it, do you guys have a, uh, there must be a website, right? Yeah. But it was Fox, so now I have no idea what it is. Probably the WB That's website. Prob- there's probably fans of the show that do stuff. Mm-hmm. People people tell everyone everything Just at, do nowadays. Just do a Google search. Yeah. 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 Yeah, you find out. Uh, you fans can find out uh, when the show is. And uh, Drew was with Lindsay at a uh, Shine Award. Uh, uh-huh. mm-hmm. Shine Award is uh, what, Drew? Sexual Health and Entertainment. Mm, so it's I like it's, know that. it's an acronym, but yeah. where's the E? Oh, that's an entertainment. Yeah, well, where's the N then? In. In. Oh, no. Yeah, yeah, I know. No. It doesn't work no. both ways, does it? Yeah, no. <laughs> you can't have it both ways. <laughs> yep. Yeah, it's uh, it's not going to work. Right? In fact, I'm just thinking now. You had one of your most memorable moments at the Shine Awards. Oh once. no! Yeah, no, no, did. Adam, yeah, they had did. a meltdown once, and he started uh, started yelling at everybody, mowing down people. <laughs> Remember that? Yeah, it was good. Yeah, uh, yeah. We won't we won't go off on that uh, too far. But I I had what uh, you could consider a uh, an emotional breakdown. A meltdown, <laughs> yeah, a meltdown. But that, I, that was our second. The Love Line at MTV had won. It's like won Shine Awards like two years in a row. We used to win Shine Awards because yeah. we're wow. the only we're the only show that was on that was uh, not trying to hurt people. Really, <laughs> it wasn't, we weren't helping anybody. But the fact is, we weren't we weren't Our jackass people. or anything, mm-hmm. or uh, Tom Green or anything. So they would give us a award every year. And I remember uh, it was uh, was the year before we used to have these publicity pictures. Me and Drew, right. Drew looked like he was in a wheelchair, <laughs> and I, I looked like the Phantom of the Opera right. because my, there was a shade that went uh, across yeah. my face. Uh, I look like Stephen Hawking. Yeah. yeah, and I'm not a real picky guy. Yeah, yeah, right. Well, but mm-hmm. oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> with pictures? No, no, not with pictures. I've never no, done anything no. with pictures before. No, no, no. no, no but pictures. you and I look at these pictures and agree yeah. that they were sort of laughable. Yeah, yeah pathetic. It wasn't even that we. It wasn't like we looked fat or anything. Uh-huh. They were just. They were just sort of. Drew looked like a cripple, and I had this weird shadow over my face. They were really bad pictures. They were like incredibly laughably bad pictures. So I said, uh, let's do something about these pictures. And I kept telling everybody, and I told them about five times. I told our manager and our producers and everything, we should change these pictures. I kept, no one ever did it. And then we're at the Shine Awards, and they said, we want you to go over with the uh, paparazzi over there and take some pictures. And I said, oh, you, you want me to take pictures? And they're like, yeah. And I said, are you high? Screw you. And they're like, huh? What? And I just yelled at everybody. Everybody. Wow. Everybody. Everybody. The, the people who organized the event. No. Oh, yes, I didn't yes. yell at them. Oh, no, yes, they were there. Yes, well, they, they oh, stood yeah. by while I yelled at my people. But I, didn't yell, I didn't yell at them. That yeah, was good. Got everyone nervous. Excellent. You need to, you need to do that, Lindsay. Total, well, I had my most embarrassing moment ever at the Shine Awards. Oh, really? I laughed at the, at the middle of the girls' AIDS monologue. Do you remember this? Well, that's I went, right. <laughs> And everybody looked at me. She acknowledged me from the stage, actually. Really? Said, was that audible? Really funny, huh? Yeah. It was really embarrassing. Well, she what? was kind of had some humorous qualities about yeah. it. Yeah. And it was obviously a monologue. It yeah. wasn't her real life no, right, experience. Exactly. So. But she didn't have AIDS? No, but her she made son. it. She was talking about it. She was playing a role of a mother of some son. Oh, of see, that's why I don't go to those anymore. Yeah. Crazy actors up there pretending like they have AIDS. <laughs> What's remember, wrong with this, Dan? Remember Marlia Leslie was standing there when you started screaming at her, too? Oh, that was your... Yeah. That was your publicist? Yeah. Well, I told her to get off her ass, too. <laughs> yeah. All right. There you go. Listen, let me... Let me all right. We got to move ahead. Yes. But uh-huh. let me just say this about this town. And here's the problem with this town. And, and, you know, I don't know how people feel about me or us or any of that. But <laughs> I got a good idea. But here's the thing. In, in the normal world, especially in the construction world they used to come from, if you told somebody to do something three or four times and they didn't do it, then the, f- the fifth time you said you would start it with numb nuts or lame ass. <laughs> you well, know the, what I mean? The, the next, and they would fire them. Then it would be your fire. Like you'd nuts. go, hey, hey, 
hey, son of Tard, he would start yelling at them. Yeah. In this business, everyone gets weird. Mm -hmm. like they're like, oh, my God, he's yelling at me. <laughs> yeah, he told you five times, it pays you 100 grand a year, get off the ass. Hey, it's really, weird. guys, guys get paid 10 grand a year, you get to yell at all day, all long. day long. Pay someone 150 grand a year, you can't raise your eyebrow. Mm -hmm. That's this town. This is a horrible town. We're going to Montana. That's hey, right. coming? Adam. I'm Minnesota. That's where I'm from. You're from Minnesota? There? Yeah. Go over there. Okay, you you're single? No. Yeah? yeah? No. Lindsay's in the dance. Bring, She's in the dance. You can dance. <laughs> I'll play the lute. Drew will sing opera. Awesome. We'll, we'll start our own cult. <laughs> it, it'll be great. We'll repopulate the earth. It'll be great. Yeah. Oh, a bunch of cloned Adams. All right. Scary. All right. Where are we, Drew? Uh, line one. All right. Reagan? Oh, oh, we yeah. left off with Reagan last night. Right. Yeah. Let's restate it all, Reagan. Go ahead. So. Um, okay, well, I'm, I'm having some, like, um, pain when I have sex, and I'm wondering, I, I'm sort of concerned that it might be related to um, what I used to do. I used, I used to do um, pornography for a while. You're worried that you caught something? No, no. Um, I, was di I was diagnosed with vulvodynia um, two years prior to any of the, the, of the stuff that I did, but I'm worried if... How did you do pornography if you had painful vulva? Is that what that <laughs> is? That's what that is. Painful vulvodynia vulva. is po yeah. painful vulva. Th there's a yeah. trademark laugh in the face <laughs> of pain. AIDS, painful vulva. Lindsay well, loves it always all. Always in trouble. During, during the time when I was doing that, I didn't have as much pain, so it was okay. When you were doing pornography, there was no pain. Uh, she was there wasn't as much pain. She was coked up, Drew. Oh. Yeah. Were you doing uh, drugs no. then? No. 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 Are, you, are you a drug addict? No. Are you a sex addict? No. Do you have any infections or anything you've had? Any injuries or? No, I haven't. I I had mono when um, no, 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 when no. it first came what, up. What kind <laughs> of form? When it was first released. You're one of the mono, mono pioneers. <laughs> no. Nope. You're one of the carriers I, red from carpet, the lab. Red carpet mono. <laughs> <laughs> but the question is, I'm I'm wondering if um. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. We have questions for you. Okay. All right. So uh, last night I was asking what kind of porno you were doing, right? I, yeah. You didn't want to say. You want to check it out, Adam? <laughs> Yeah. Sort of amateur. <laughs> amateur stuff. Mm -hmm. And, but amateur stuff where you get paid. Yeah. yeah. Pretend amateur. <clears throat> and, yeah. uh, and how much were you, were you able to make a decent living for a while? Um, not really a decent living. Um. How much would you make per movie? Well, you know, it just, it just depended. But, um, I really want to ask about, about the, um, the pain issue. Because that's, um. I know, but important. I know that's what you want to ask. But I want to know how much money you got paid. Um, well, it really depended on, um, you know, what, what was involved. Yeah. And it was just sort of standard for what was what was going on then and, like, what was involved. So. What's the standard for... Nobody knows. That, how much money were you making? Come on. Um, like $500. Uh, each, each time you did a scene? Yeah. All right. Well, there you go. There's the answer. Okay. And you're wondering if the pain is related to that, even though it was there before you started the pornography. Mm -hmm. In fact, the pornography seemed to have been some sort of treatment for this. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure that it is related, and I'm, I'm in therapy dealing with that. But I, I also really want to know if, um, if you know of any like new treatments for it, um, because I'm just, I'm doing the same, the same things to well, take care of it. And it's not getting better. What, what a precise vulvodynia is a very sort of non-specific description. Just My great grandparents are from Volvodinia. Volvodinia, <laughs> Czechoslovakia. It's, it's, it's They're right on the board. Hungry. It, 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 <laughs> yeah. 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 It, it Pennsylvania's in Volvodinia, I believe. It just it. means painful vulva. That's all it means. Yeah. And so what exactly is the symptom you get? You have pain all the time? You have burning? You have pain with intercourse? You have pain at penetration? What, what's the deal? I, I have, um, it's not all the time, but I have more pain after I've had intercourse and um, it's just sort of sore, and it doesn't burn, but it's sore, and um, I, I, it hurts more when it's wet. Wet? And yeah. you, you've seen a, a gynecologist? Yes. Do you take birth control pills? Yes. True. What, what pills uh, the vulvas, that's just like the whole, that'd be like the, the outside. Chan, that'd be the chassis of a car. Mm, the body of the car. Well. Yeah, the body, that's yeah, the chassis. The, out, the outside. Yeah, yeah Every, everything you can see. But, uh, but yeah, but I mean, like what I'm saying is, is you could say the, the chassis. Quiet down. I don't want to see any pictures of the vulvodynia. <laughs> get the globe and find me vulvodynia. Get the almanac, Drew. No, here's what I'm saying. Like with a car, 
the, the outside of the car would be, you know, fenders and hood and trunk and quarter panel, that kind of stuff. But it would also just be called the body. Yes. Or the chassis. This is the body. Yeah, the vulva is the body yes. of the vagina. And, and then, then you got your labia. Right. Gregoras. And yeah. the and it's all vulva. It's all vulva. Yeah. All but vulva. It's, once it stopped being vulva, when it goes in inside. Uh, deep enough. Yes, mm -hmm. inside. Let me, let me finish no, up with her here. I don't want to see any yeah. vulvas. Yeah. Okay, sorry. R you, you okay? Yeah. 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 Reagan? Yeah. Reagan? What, what happened? Did you get molested or something? Um, no. I think I was just exposed to things too early. Remember she had a dad that was really super sexual and stuff? And yeah, whatever. that's what it was. So that, that's a form of sexual abuse. But look, I still would very, very aggressively look for some sort of biological explanation for what's going on, even though you've right. got all kinds of... Yeah. It's a lot, a ton of psychological you, You've got a ton on. of stuff going on, but the quality of this pain is not the, what usually women get from emotional problems. Uh -huh. And you're, what birth control pill are you on? Orthotricycline. The, the, the kind of pain you're describing, in my experience, more often than not, is something related to estrogen deficiencies. Uh -huh. And so you might look into pills that have higher doses of estrogen or less progesterones or less uh -huh. powerful progesterones, things like that, or maybe estrogen creams. But you need to go talk to a gynecologist and work with them for a while about this. I, I would really, really stay in your therapy. Obviously, there's a ton yeah. to talk about. But yeah. look for a biological explanation for this, okay? You got a, boy, you got a boyfriend? Yeah, I do. I, I have a question about the estrogen. No. Yeah, real quick, go. I'm, I'm using estrogen cream. I'm wondering oh, if... Well, um, that's what, that's what, <laughs> that's what, you would that's what I would suggest. Does it help at all? Uh, um, I, I mean, it's gone on for four years. I still have it. And well, it we, uh, again, well, that's a trick. I, I don't know how over the I goddamn know. phone. She's had this problem her whole life. She's again, going uh, to just, a, just a caveat. I've seen this kind of stuff from progesterone agents. So just to maybe get off the progesterone or weaker progesterone or off the pill for a while or something. Yeah. <sighs> something was up with her in a big oh, way. Of course. Yeah, but bigger. Bigger than just dad left a Playboy on the can. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I, mean, well, I want to know about her boyfriend and whether he's okay with this and what's up. I think she's lying to him. Hmm? Reagan? Yeah. Does your boyfriend know about your past? Yes, he does. Is he cool with it? Um, not. He's, he tries to be supportive, but it's really difficult for him. Okay, ma'am. You take care of yourself. Thanks. 22 now. Sorry? You're 22. You're young. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, world's your, uh, your vulva. Yeah. <laughs> All right? Your oyster. Well, I'm trying yeah. to. All right. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> take care. She's trying to do stuff. She's trying to do something good. I'm right? trying to. Whatever. I'll fill the blank. Trying. Listen, I can, good. I can tell my people with inflection what they're going to say, Drew. I don't have to hear the whole <laughs> no, goddamn I sentence. I understand. Why don't we just forget the talking part? No, 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 no. No, no, no. I know what you're going to say. She's trying to get it together. She's trying to keep on keeping on. She's trying to put one foot in front of the other. Mm -hmm. I, I'm all for it. Yeah. we got to get together. We'll go to uh, Vulvodynia. <laughs> <laughs> Lindsay ever experienced Repopulate Vulvodynia? Ex friend with Vulvodynia? <laughs> no, I've no experience never no experience with Vulvodynia. Not been out that way? No. Nah. No. Nah. It's great. beautiful. Beautiful. <laughs> the people. The people are great. Government's uh, not great over there, but the people, second to none. Mm -hmm. Megan? Yes? You're 20? Yes. Hello? There's a, you know, I'm trying to think hypothetically. Are there any, there any countries where the uh, government is fantastic and the people are ass? You, you know what I mean? You don't really hear about that I've very much. I've never actually been out of the U.S. You not so been to, you not been to Volvadinia? No, I've been to. What, now, what made that? What prompted that thought? What do you mean? Uh, what, what, what was the I, line I, of I'm thinking? I'm just thinking. You always hear about uh, what a horrible, corrupt government all these these mm -hmm. countries have. But people. the people, but the, the people, people are, are great. great. Yeah, mm -hmm. I always say, no, nah, I don't believe it. First off, what's the nationality of the government? That's the first question I have. And secondly, what got them in power and what kept them in power? The people. But yeah. thirdly, what? That's what? number one. But here's what I'm saying. Is there the polar opposite of that? Great government, horrible people? <laughs> There's got to be somewhere. No. -uh. Yeah, no one admits that because it's not Pollyanna-ish enough. It's not, you know, Cuba, great people, great people, great people, great people. They keep Fidel Castro in power for 45 years. Yeah. Yeah, yeah great. They're delights great over there. Great people. Great. Megan? Yes. You're 20? I am 20. What's up? Um, well, I have a question, and it's really more of a question um, that my boyfriend was curious about. Um, we were wondering exactly what um, milking the prostate is. It's a um, euphemism for wasting time. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's sort of like... Uh, Staying around, milking the prostate. Yeah, you're the hacky sack. Hot winter. <laughs> uh, hot summer day, nothing to do. 
just down what, front of the corner what, store. What, what is it, though? Uh, first, I want to know how you came upon that. Um, well, he asked me if it was having an orgasm inside of your ass, and I really, honestly, I'm clueless, so, um, I don't know so where somehow it came he could, from. He could, he could <laughs> express the semen into his rectum if he milked the No, I don't. It makes him gay, <laughs> right? I don't, I don't know. Makes him gay. All right, here's what it is. It is what a doctor does when you reach into a rectal exam and try to sort of milk out or press out any inflammatory material. Okay. Now, God knows there may be something about that in the Cosmo as a way of enhancing <laughs> orgasm or something, which is total BS. Well, it was in that movie Road Trip, I think. Oh, uh, really? The guy uh, went in to get some kind of exam, and she... I didn't see that movie. Oh, I remember that. You know, she, she, like, uh, reached her hand up, the nurse did, and yeah. like, squeezed it out. But yeah. And he liked it, though, didn't he? Yeah. He's pretty into it. But he was out of control, that yeah. kid. That 28-year-old kid who played the 19-year-old <laughs> kid. Yeah, he was out of control, the guy with the receding hairline, who was supposed <laughs> to be in college. But, but Drew, mm. you, you could not coax an orgasm that way. That mm, that's I'm supposed, I, I I think we had a caller one time said that, but that's pretty, that's out of the out of this world rare. Where you just sort of... Uh, it's a prostate, it's just, a, just a immune gland sitting back there. Yeah, well, you know the people. You know what people think of it as is, uh, you know, when they catch a rattlesnake. Yeah. And, and, when they exp express the teeth, they the, milk them. Yeah. They milk the venom out of yeah, them, like yeah. they, you know, they press on those glands behind mm. the, the fangs there. So and if you take the penis and, and then push it down on a glass side of a glass, you're able to, and then push back yeah. on the process. Yeah, yeah. You want some cream in that yeah. coffee? <laughs> I'll, show you. I'll do it right now. Yeah, uh, no, not that the same way, but the same theory, which is y you can get in and, you know, there's some gland and yeah, you, you can, can press you, you on it. What you get is pus. Right. That's basically what you get if it's infected. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Well, yeah. yeah. Isn't that nice? It's lovely. <laughs> you, I'll see you in a little bit. All righty. All right, Melissa, see ya. I'll catch you on the flip side, all right, baby? <laughs> Melissa? Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Melissa? Hello? Hello. We'll see you in a Hi. little bit. We'll see you in a little bit, okay? Who? Okay. <laughs> All right, baby. Okay. Well, actually, we'll see you in homeroom tomorrow. You going to meet homeroom? I don't know. Hello? Hello? Call her who goes by Melissa. Okay. Right. Hello. Yeah. Hi. Hi. No. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't. Okay. Okay. Um, I had a question... Whenever me and uh, my boyfriend have anal sex, for, I cry. Yeah. Yeah. So does, so does your dad. Baby Jesus. <laughs> baby <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Drew weeps a little. Oh, my God. No, but it doesn't hurt or anything. Like, I just, I don't know. I think it's an emotional thing. And like it's I an just, intense discharge emotionally? Like it's, or, or what? I don't know. I, well, I'm calling to find out why I cry. How can I make it stop? Yeah. I just... Hold on a second. Not a question, exactly. Mm. No, and uh, delivered like a, like the uh, super denim robot who used to test yeah. the uh, J.C. Penny jeans my parents used to buy me in the yeah. 70s. Ooh. That would have been a good job for you. Ouch. Yeah. Or me. Well, Drew, you're acting. I don't think yeah. you've been good enough to play no, a robot. You're, right. you're pretty pretty <laughs> stiff, buddy. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see. Uh, wait, where was she? She was. Uh, yeah. Melissa. Yeah. Yeah, we don't believe you. No, I swear to God, I'm so serious. We're calling this a bogus call, baby. No, it's yeah. not. Who put you up to this? <laughs> Where's the mail? I know there's a mail you claim that is behind you, but I want the mail behind this call. Do you hear me, sister? The yeah. What are you talking? This is so not bogus. You can talk to my boyfriend. Yeah. Uh, oh, what are talking about? <laughs> Shocking. Oh my God, it's so true. He's right there in the room. Yeah, magically. No, I have to go walk outside and get him. Yeah, okay, you go get yeah, him. He's out listening to the oh. radio, yeah. laughing his ass off with his friends. There we go. <laughs> right, hang on. See, look, how do I know there's a, a male that had put her up to this Absolutely. and is somewhere somewhere nearby? Men are always responsible. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. Hey, uh, guy dude, hello. bro? Hey, hello? Yeah. Hey, what's up, man? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is kind of odd. Sorry, man. Yeah, I know. It's a difficult situation. It's, I don't understand what it is, you know, it's like, mm -hmm. I guess she enjoys it, so mm -hmm. we go through with it, but, um, I don't know, it's not that bad. 
I, I don't understand why she cries though. It's like it's not painful for her, I guess. She, mm -hmm. does what she says though. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you oblige her with this. Uh, how old are you, son? Me, I'm 22. 22. And yeah. she's how old? She's 15. 15. Well, yeah. It, no, uh, no emotional qualms. <laughs> no problem. No with that. moral qualms with the sodomizing uh, fifteen-year-olds. No, 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 no. Just the, it's just the basic, you know, arguments between the relationship. But there's nothing like I, I've never like physically abused or anything like that. So. Yeah, you just uh, again you sodomize a fifteen-year-old. <laughs> what do you do for a living? Uh, I'm unemployed right now. Really? Don't what? Yeah. Sh shocking! A guy like you would not uh, have gainful employment. I can't mm. believe it. <laughs> it layoffs over at the university, or what's going on? Uh, just hopping around from job to job right now. JPL. Sure what, I don't. I don't know what I want to major. I want to go full time to school. Uh huh. Do you uh, trying to figure out what you know. What's what's the best line to go into? Yeah. In the future, you know. <laughs> well, uh, soybeans, son. Huh? Soybeans. Yeah, yeah. You, 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 you're going to junior college. You're thinking about going to junior college. Yeah. 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 All right, that's enough. Forget about college. Just get a job. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Okay. And uh, you know what you're doing to this girl's illegal. If in fact this is what's going on. You understand that? Yeah. We've been together for a long time. Right? Doesn't matter. Oh, hold on. Wait, wait, wait. That <laughs> makes it worse. It makes it worse. Wait, which was 14, 11? Uh, I don't know, maybe a year. <laughs> Approximately at the time, I'm not sure. You, you don't know how long you two have been together? Nah, it's been, well, I mean, we've been off and on once or twice. It wasn't that, I mean, it, we've never had, let like... Me, let me ask you a quick... Well, the thing is, is we've actually... Simple question, like, simple question. Listen, life. do you not know that it's illegal for you to have sex with somebody under the age of 18? Yeah. You know that? Yes. So you know you're, you're committing a crime? Yeah. Okay, all right. Yeah, okay, I understand what you're saying. It's good, good, good. Good point there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Where's this girl's dad? I mean, obviously uh, he's out of the picture, but where's mom? She doesn't care? Uh, yeah, probably. She's uh, living with me right now. She's what? Living with me. Uh, Glendale. Yeah. This girl's living with you. What are you doing for money? Like I said, I just, I mean, I just got unemployed. I mean, I just, uh, Left my last job, put in my two weeks notice from my last job just a little while back. What did you do? Uh, let me see. It was just building stages. It was, uh... Yeah, well, why'd you... Yeah. Uh, I understand how you support yourself now. You living at home? Well, no, I've, I've been saving money for a while. I mean, I've, I've, I've had pretty good jobs in the past. It's oh. not like I'm a, a bum. All right, all right. You know, I've kept good jobs. All right, well, let's just answer the question. The question <laughs> is a fascinating, fascinating. <laughs> the deal is, though, sometimes a... a, a uh, a very intense physical experience, even like lifting heavy weights and things where you exert yourself. And it's particularly when there's sort of stimulation of visceral kinds of function <sighs> and intense emotional connections and probably God knows orgasm. They, women discharge emotionally, and that's what's going yeah. on. It's not, and also, doesn't mean she's sad. doesn't necessarily mean there's anything uh, wrong with her. It's just 15. She's living with this guy. She has got issues. That, that, that's, Problems. That's far worse than the sodomy. Dad's... Gone. God knows what he did for he left, and uh, yeah. God knows what kind of shapes mom's in. And yeah. Hey, listen, fellas, uh, all you uh, all you pops out there, you dads and uh, dads to be out there. Hey, once you're a 15 year old getting uh, sodomized by an unemployed 22 year old in Glendale, uh, just uh, give him a little abuse and hit the road. That's uh, that's all you need. I, it's a simple equation, right? It, it's easy. It's a little recipe, yeah. Easy. Just a sprinkling of abuse, and then it's off to Florida. You go. Unless, of course, she lives in Florida, and then... Then you go to Minnesota. Then yeah. you got to go to Minnesota. Yeah, yeah or, or uh, Volvinia. <laughs> Volvinia? Volvidinia. Volvidinia. Vol Volvidinia. That's in Maine. <laughs> you got Volvidinia. Yeah, the old country, Volvidinia. But Florida. <laughs> Florida's the place Florida. you should go, and then you forget all about her, and then uh, a couple of years goes by, she gets sodomized in Glendale by the... Old and it was all your fault. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you got that. You got that to look forward to. Good times, eh? All right. Should we take a break? Yeah, I think it's good. Idea. Lindsay uh, Bartleson is our guest tonight. She is, uh, what's she from? Doing? <laughs> Ground of <laughs> her life. Yeah. Ground of her life. Friday nights, uh, WB. We'll take a, uh, just moving. We'll take a quick break. We'll be right back. <laughs> Hey, 
there, buddy. Love line. I'm Adam Corolla. That's Dr. Drew over there. Phone number 1 800 L O V E 191. Lindsay Bartleson is our guest tonight. She's from Grounded for Life, and that is on, well, it was on Fox, but uh, now it's going to WB, and it's going to be on Friday nights. And when is the first night that it makes its change? February 28th, I do believe. Oh. Well, wait a minute. We're in January. Yeah, six weeks. Six weeks. Mm -hmm. But is it going to be on? At Fox in the meantime, and, and she said it just random times. Times will pop up. Oh, okay. They, they doesn't have a schedule. Doesn't have a slot right now. We're the redheaded stepchild of Fox. Coincidentally, everyone's got red. Right, right mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. Are they? Um, yeah. Are they? Are they doing something weird with TV shows in general, like running them twice a mm -hmm. lot and running shows like same show like Wednesday and Thursday night and stuff like? Is it all over the place? Are there it's no more over. rules now? People are switching networks, shifting times. Yeah. There used to be like all the new shows started in this particular month. Now right. they're they're firing up all over the place. Cable. Mm -hmm. Is it? It's just sort of hell. It I just mean, means that they're all screwed and have no idea what to do. Basically. I, I, I don't. I don't mind it, but it's sort of uh, it's a free for all now. It's every mm -hmm. every network for themselves. Yep. Jesus Christ. All right. Mm -hmm. Look how many different uh, shows there are now compared to. Uh, I know it's kind of almost like and and the quality too. They're good. You can't watch them all. It's scary. It's so yeah. annoying. It's like, hey, hey, slow down. No, it is, and and if you uh, if you have TiVo, it'll it'll drive you nuts too because you want to you want to TiVo five shows simultaneously and you can't do it. Mm -hmm. I know. What are we gonna do? We got to get more eyes. Yep. Yeah. And future man will have uh, six eyes. I predict, Drew. <laughs> Maybe way to compress video and information. And two sets of ambiguous genitalia. Two sets. <laughs> two sets. <laughs> That's four, four ambiguous genitalia. That's right. Two vulva. And I'm going to have... <laughs> two vulva I'm, I, I'm gonna, no, no vulva. No vulva vulvodynia. Two thumbs one for can working have vulvodynia. simultaneous remotes with one hand, and mm -hmm. I'll never leave the house. It's going to be great. Yeah. And I'll learn to survive off of my own waist, so I never have to get up <laughs> off the sofa. I'll be completely contained with my... Two sets of ambiguous genitalia and surviving <laughs> off my own That's waist. Right. Great heat, you and then cook your waist up from the heat from your waist. <laughs> I'll build a home from my waist. I'll be a shelter from my waist. <laughs> I no, told I'll you. have no waist because it'll just be a circle. I told you. I, I'll I, have. I'll eat. I'll eat one box of pop tarts once, and that'll be it. It'll be. It'll be a never-ending circle of life. That's I, right. I told you. I came upon a coil pot. The the original coil pot one time running in the Arroyo Pasadena. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, Drew found a dookie in a coil pot shape. Yeah, somebody lived, nice. some street man lived down on the bridge, and he'd taken his... You sure? Little, you sure? Because uh, one out of every 30 I drop comes out like soft swirl. <laughs> no, no, this was not soft swirl. This was like an Indian coil pot, you All know right. what I'm saying? All right, because wow. yeah, I was a ceramics major. I could look at it and analyze it, if you like. All right, here we go. Let's go to the phones. Sonny? You're 15? Yeah. What's up? Okay, I was wondering, oh, by the way, Adam, yeah. when you got married, the week, the whole week I wore black. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, baby. Okay, and I want to be a juggie when I grow up. All so. right, baby. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay, anyway, um, when I was little, I used to watch porn. I didn't know I was watching, but my parents just had it. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I don't, and I was wondering if like that had something to do with me being like such a sexual person, because my parents are like normal. Sexual what? Like sexual person. Yeah, it, it can, that kind of thing can create sexual compulsivity for sure. Yeah, and like my parents, like listening on my phone call, they tried to get me to watch Dr. Phil. No, th that will not help. I know. <laughs> uh, I would suggest you look into things written by Patrick Carnes. Well, well wait a second. -E wait a second. Your parents oh, listened in on a phone call you had? Yeah, I was like my friend. And you were talking dirty? Yeah. <laughs> was it your mom and your dad? No, just my dad. Uh, and what I, I, I tell you, the most disturbing <laughs> part about this call is that people are suggesting that they look towards Phil for something therapeutic. I know, and I was like, Dr. That, Phil that is evil, Daddy. That is, that is, I mean, that is chilling to me, I can <laughs> tell you. Yeah. You can't catch trout oh. with 10 4 oh, wait a minute, you can. Yeah, he's just, well, Phil is A, a blowhard, but B, it's sort of simple psychology for stupid people. Very, very basic stuff. Very, it very, very basic. Non-therapeutic. Non-therapeutic. That would not gonna help you. 
Well, it, it, you know, you know what it is. It's sort of a no duh psychology. No it's duh. like it's like when when people, fitness experts, go, "You want to lose weight? You've got to move, you've got to breathe, and you have to take in water, and you can't be eating the fats and the chili and the chili fries." And you've got it's like, okay, no really? Duh. Thanks, thanks. You're saying if I'm just comatose and I get an IV. Of Tommy's chili and just uh, mainline it right in my veins. You say, I will not lose weight that way? Interesting. This is what Dr. <laughs> Phil is, basically. I, I don't know how the people make a, make a living off of the sort of no-duh stuff. Susan Powder, the uh, fitness guru, yeah, but she, that was seven or eight guru. years ago, used you know, to be out uh, you, preaching that crap. Very interesting you would bring her name up she again. She used to literally say you have to breathe. Yeah, but her stuff, I mean, remember how nutty she was. Her stuff came, came up again. The vaccine stuff's coming around again. Don't let anybody vaccinate your kids. Oh, right. n hundreds of kids died as a result of her insisting that, that they people, shouldn't be vaccinated. Yeah, I mean, it was it is a disaster, disaster. That's horrible. And, and no one no one holds these people accountable for that crap. Yeah. Mm -mm. So you're saying she killed hundreds of people? Drew? Kids. Oh, it's hundreds of kids. Yes. Susan Power killed hundreds of kids. Yes. <laughs> True. You're gonna get sued now. <laughs> no, I don't. I don't mean, no, I don't mean that, that she killed people directly. I'm Doggy. saying I'm saying that people who advocate dangerous things ought to be held accountable. That's uh, all yeah. I'm saying. I, I agree. I agree. Sonny? Yeah. Oh, but I did compromise with him to watch Teen Species instead. All right. God bless you. <laughs> uh, all right. So so now you are having dirty anyway, you've had sex and all that yeah. stuff, right? And and what kind of pornography were you watching when you were young? It was, I don't, like, I don't know. I just used to watch a lot of it. And I didn't even realize what I was watching until, like, later on. Oh, boy. All right. And, and uh, you figure that got you started. I, I, I don't know because my, like, my parents are normal, so I can't. Yeah, well, they're normal now, but God knows what they were doing to each other yeah, when they well, were. they were hippie. Yeah, there we go. So uh, they're normal, but go. they left all this porn around, didn't see anything wrong with it, no boundaries for their kid. It's, it's not good. Listen, just look up Patrick Carnes on, on the web and get some books by him. Oh, what? Uh, what? Wow. You what? What? We don't have the internet. Uh, <laughs> um, well, what, what's wrong? Why don't you have the internet? Because my parents live under a rock. We'll go to a library or wherever. There's the internet, you know, out okay. there. Uh, I think it's called Don't Don't Call It Love was one of his famous ones. No, I just uh, I read a book. Hmm. Yeah. Hippie parents. Hippie parents. I had those hippie parents. Pain in the ass. How are your parents? My parents are wonderful. Yeah. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in trouble. Wow. Kick her off the show. <laughs> oh, yes, I said F. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my. No, they're great, wonderful parents. Oh, they didn't teach her uh, many They didn't teach Oh, my dad. He's going to be humiliated. Oh, no, we bleeped out. Yeah, it's all right. Okay, good. <laughs> F was out. Lindsay said the F word. I People said the F. Yeah, I'm yeah. sorry. That's all right. My dad always used to say 18-year-old language. Uh, Chris? Yes. You're 41? Yes. What's up? Well, I need to find out what do you do when your husband is, I guess, going through a midlife crisis and wants to have another woman after he's already cheated on me way back when we were younger. Mm -hmm. And um, I accept, you know, I forgave it and everything, and I can't do it this time. As yeah, well, this is, this is not a midlife crisis, okay? This is a guy who's a cheater. Yeah. Who's kind of, who's kind of kept that under control for God knows what reason or how. And it's, here it is again. It's back. No. Well, it says here they've been together for 30 years. You, you guys were together since you were 11? Yep. How old is he? 42. He right. was 12? Well, they're, they're like, you guys were boyfriend and girlfriend when you were in the fifth oh, grade oh, oh, oh. and stuff? Yeah, we've known each other since we were in second grade. All right. All right. And uh, when did he cheat it a long time ago? Like when? In the 80s. In the 80s? Yeah. More than once. Um, I I think a couple times. Yeah, a couple times. But this this is did did caught. you go right into a romantic relationship in high school and then right into a marriage kind of thing? Yeah, we have only been married. It will be married ten years um, in August. So it it was. Can you understand? Yeah. We're we're trying to fill in the blanks here, right? I know. I know. Help us understand. Is it the fact that you've been together continuously and he never had a chance to explore himself with other no. people? No, no, because I we've split up and he's dated other people. Right. I I was with somebody for seven years. You know, we've been on and off. Yeah, right. Seven um, years. But we 
I mean, as a marriage, it's good. We're best friends, put it that way. All right. And as a friend, I can do most anything for him. Mm. But as a wife, I can't. Mm. I don't know what to do. Mm. I don't know how to deal with this issue. And it's very stressful well, on you, the marriage. You guys have kids? We have a son. Mm. Have a son. All right. And, and I don't want to show him the wrong immoral way to be. No. Yet, hey, forget yeah. about immoral or moral. It, it's unhealthy for him to have parents that don't have an intimate relationship. Right. That's bad for him. Right. What? Especially now. <laughs> All right, hold on a second. She's got a little of that uh, hoodoo guru Charles Nelson Riley laugh. She's going, especially now. <laughs> You're the little <laughs> cackle in it. Hey, hey, Chris? Yes. You an alcoholic? No. Oh, she smokes. Uh, smokes? Uh, what do you do, speed? No. Ever do it? Oh, uh, no. Yeah? Uh, you were in a speed for a little while, weren't you? No. Huh? Not that, no. Well, heroin? What okay. were you into? No. Co no. What? <laughs> nothing. Pot? Not me, nothing. You were never into speed. No, why would mm -hmm. I be? I don't know. You said when you said speed, you said not that. So that left us thinking about what well, else? We dr I drink, and you know, I mean, I'm not an alcoholic, I, unless you consider having a drink one, yeah, an alcoholic. No, well, I Well, alcoholism is defined by the consequences. If things have happened to you as a result of your relationship with alcohol, and you have a family history of alcoholism, that's alcoholic. So uh -huh. if your dad was an alcoholic and you have a DUI, that's, that's an alcoholic. I just get like a booze or speed thing off yeah. of uh, Chris. I don't know why, but uh, anyway. Uh, you sure I'm wrong about that? Yes. Yeah. All yeah. right. Uh, what do you do for a living? Um, I'm in the legal field. Uh, uh, that could mean a, that, I mean, yeah. I'm, she may be on the other side of the law. <laughs> You know. No, I'm on the good side. Oh, you're on the good side. All right. I work with the law. All right. All right. And uh, Bounty Hunter. And your uh, husband, he's got a decent job. He does okay? Yeah, he's injured right now, so he's not working. Back pain? Yeah. Is, uh, he, on, is he on Vicodin? Uh, Soma. Soma. Soma is a profoundly addictive drug. It's one of the hardest pe drugs to get people off of right now. They get this agitation, yes. their upper limbs, they want to punch things. It's incredible. So, so, right now. all right, so he's an addict. Okay, it's Chris? Scary. It's Chris, scary. Chris, Chris, well. here's the deal. He's an addict. He's an addict. All his, all bets are off in terms of his behavior right now. you got to get him into some kind of treatment. you got to go to Al-Anon or some sort of codependency treatment. Maybe get maybe get him, you and he, to a therapist and begin addressing his addiction straightforwardly. And Adam has some sense that maybe you have an addictive history here, too. I can't, man. Yeah. It's well, here, here's, here's what you can bet. Her dad was an alcoholic. Okay? Yeah. Chris? Uh... My dad had problems, yes. All right. Dad's an alcoholic. So you find another addict to, to marry. You got him. You've been with him forever. His disease is getting out of control. There's some behavioral problems now as a result. He's making horrible choices. But that's his addiction. Let's get that taken care of. All right. Hey, good times, though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do they have a uh, inpatient program and somewhere in Volvidinia that uh, <laughs> they could go to? No? Mm -hmm. All right. No, I'm sure of it. Lindsay Bartleson is our guest tonight. She's from Grounded for Life. Mm -hmm. Switching over to the uh, WB on the uh, 20th, 16th? Uh, 28th. 28th of uh, yeah, Fe February, February, everybody. WB, Friday nights. We'll uh, take a break. We'll be right back. <laughs> Bartleson is our guest tonight. She's a foxy redhead from Grounded for Life, and uh, that is uh, going to be switching on the 28th of uh, February over to the WB on Friday nights at uh, time. <laughs> <laughs> it's, you can find it. Mm -hmm. You're home Friday night. You're home. You know, you ain't going anywhere. That's my TV night, Friday night. Yeah. Well, that's going to be what's on the chill. WB, but when it's on Fox, it may be some other night of the week. Yeah, so. but we're looking down the road here. WB now. Yeah. Okay. There are hope. February twenty eighth. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Let's uh, get back to the phones and uh, speak to Barbara, who's thirty six. Barbara. Oh, yes. Hi. Hi there. Um, first, my husband and I love this show. Yeah. And Adam, I have a brother who's thirty, and you are his idol. He just thinks you are the best. So I just wanted to say that first off. Well, thank him for me. Yeah, he, he just finished taking an improv class in Boston in part because of, you know, what he thinks of you and everything. Well, that's, oh, that's nice. Oh, so, yeah. 
So anyhow, um, I'm in Denver, and I was just listening to, of course, last night's show, and this is what prompt I just heard a call that um, was exactly my experience, and that's what prompted my call. And the call was, um, you had a woman call up late last night who said that um, she was very small and, and thus her boyfriend had um, problem penetrating. Mm-hmm. She was looking for solutions. Right. Okay, well, I was a virgin um, when I was, um, I was 22 and um, um, started going out with my husband. And I was, um, was also very small. I went had my exam, you know, an exam at Planned Parenthood to get birth control, and I actually even couldn't get my first exam. I was, in part because I was small, in part because I was just nervous. nervous. She couldn't get the speculum in. Well, um, her advice to me at that time was to have my my boyfriend um, stretch me out, which I thought sounded rather Mm. bizarre, but it worked. So I went back and explained this whole thing, and he was, he's a great guy, I married him, and um, so he used the, at, at the time, he couldn't even get his index finger into me without really hurting me. Yeah. So he used the smallest finger that, you know, his, his, his um, little finger, and he just would, you know, move it in there and stretch, you know, just move it around to stretch things out. So and he graduated to larger it, yeah. fingers? And yes, yes, and it, it worked. <laughs> Eventually got to an elbow and then a knee. <laughs> Meanwhile, yeah, something like that. Yeah. Boyfriends and boss and listening. I mean, uh, brother, brothers, listen up. Oh, Christ's sake. Oh my God, my sister. That's right. Goes up to his elbow. My sister. Oh, Jesus Christ. You're supposed to go see the nephews over there next month. Oh Christ. That's right. Well, I, I bought my brother. Um, I love eBay, and I bought my brother. Um, Adam and Drew playing cards for a stocking stuffer this year. Wow. Ah. Where were the. Uh, they, they I know where those. I know where those from, came from. From uh, New World. New yeah, World that, that, came, that came from the Nappy like, oh Nappy Convention. That was like 1995, 94. Really? Jesus, how much did you pay for those? Oh, uh, like five bucks. Yeah, five dollars. <laughs> <laughs> that's per card, though, right? I mean, that's not for the whole deck, is it? Like five or six bucks. <laughs> wow. it, was, it, was, it was much more the shipping than the than the. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. We get we get the picture. We get the picture. <laughs> there. Yeah. <laughs> Nice. Right. What is the accent out here? Minnesota? I know. I'm from Boston. Boston. I've been out here for, I'm in Denver now, but I've been out here for a number of years. It took me a long time to call myself Barbara. Because uh. I came Barbara. out here and I said, what's your name? Right. Said, Barbara. No. What's your name? It's Barbara. They say, oh, you're from Boston. Say car. Yeah. <laughs> People would ask me to say stuff all the time, and I, and if, I was like, I can't say things on demand. Wait two minutes, and I'll either say it or something remotely like it. Right. But so, yeah, so, it's, so it's quarter to twelve here, so I'm tired. So that's uh, why I'm kind of uh, slipping. Uh, okay. So, so people, you're you're saying that uh, the the graduated yeah. size digits inside the uh, vulvodynia yeah. will <laughs> will work. He, he just started. He just started with what you know yeah. caused me the least amount of pain. Right. And that was his his pinky finger. And yes, we just he would just. How long did this take? Oh, God. As I'm 36 now, it's hard for me to really... It, it 12 years. <laughs> <laughs> 12 no, years. Uh, um, it, it, it was at least a month. Okay, but that was I, then I, you got I to the call, penis. I recall it being over a period of weeks. All right. A month right. before you could have a spectrum exam? Uh, I don't care right. anymore. But uh, here's the deal. <laughs> uh, yeah, if, if somebody's going to put this kind of time in. And this is a good suggestion, by the way. Yeah. If, if somebody wants to go through this process and maybe they have no choice, if it's a committed relationship and it's a long-term thing, that that's what they should do. And I, I would suggest that it's not quite as much stretching out as it's just Easing in. becoming comfortable, yeah. sort of like getting mm-hmm. into a hot tub, you know, sort of putting your feet into it and sitting on the edge for a few mm-hmm. minutes and then starting to slide in, mm-hmm. right. slowly becoming more comfortable with it. So, that's good advice. God bless the uh, Planned Parenthood. the uh, Nazi <laughs> vulvalist at the uh, Planned, Planned Parenthood. Parenthood. It suggests this kind of uh, vaginal experimentation. Madison? Yes? You're 22? I am, yes. What's up? Um, I, I would vote Adam for president, just to start off with. Thanks. There's a lot of You're fans welcome. going wow. there. Yeah, Usually good. people call in the show don't like the show, uh, we've, we've found. But uh, tonight, much different. <laughs> Okay, um, I am 22, and about four years ago, I came down with HPV, and it was around 
my back end, um, and I haven't had, you know, an outbreak in years, but um, since then, since I got that, I've been getting itching around my anus. And how, was, how was it treated? I'm sorry? How was it treated? Um, he burned them off. With them off. frozen, okay. So, and I haven't had an occurrence since, but um, it, they, they were around. And you've had itching ever since? Um, yeah, um, it's not too bad, but um, lately it kind of has been. I mean, it's a little more constant than I think it should be, and it's not directly in the anus. It was really where my warts were. Which is where? Dang. Which was, it, it was just like the area around it, not the, like, actually. Around the anus. Yeah, yeah. And, and it itches now, and, you know, since then it's just it's been kind of weird, and I'm wondering if that's normal, if it's part of the HPV. Or no, it's not part of the HPV. Uh-huh. I, not typically part of having been burned or frozen off, uh-huh. you worry about other kinds of infection, even things like whipworm and things. If you have this child in the house, it's just called pruritus ain't I? you got to go see a doctor and evaluate. There's a lot of different things that can do that. That's a situation where you'd want to set up an oscillating fan when you got the uh, wood burner out, mm. bent the chick over the sawhorse, and we're burning off those warts. <laughs> a, little, a little plume of smoke comes up after each one of them. Yeah, you get a little circulation going in that room. You know what I mean? <laughs> get that oscillation sure. thing on. It's, it's a little movement. That's good times. I'm going to be leaning over. <laughs> oh, that's a gig. Hi. That is a gig right there. All right, we'll take a quick break. We'll be right back. Buddy, it's Love Line. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Brew over there. Phone number 1 800 L O V E 191. The great Jimmy Kimmel in here tomorrow night, everybody. Mm-hmm. Yeah, just look up and uh, notice that. Maybe, maybe we'll carpool. So that'll be good. Always, uh, always a good guest. Always a funny show when Jimmy's <coughs> in here. Actually, when was the last time you were here when Jimmy was here? Long time ago. Yeah, I guess maybe he's, it has. He's filled in for me a couple of times. Yeah, it's been a long time. All right. Well, we'll, uh, we'll get it together tomorrow <coughs> night. Lindsay Bartleson is here tonight from, uh, yeah, Grounded for <laughs> Life. Well, you know, since it's going to the WB, I just I stopped thinking about it. Hey, you know? we love the WB. It's going to be on, on uh, Fridays at 9 o'clock, and it's going to make the shift on February 28th. And uh, we're guessing it's going to be about 9 o'clock. <laughs> Something like, yeah. But uh, you, you fans get on the uh, website, figure it out. And then uh, once you figure it out, go ahead and uh, tell your friends. Mm-hmm. That's how it works. You can't, cool. Everything's on the Internet now. I can't keep anything down. All right. We're ready to go? Yep. We'll get to uh, Jennifer, who's 19. Jennifer? Yes. What's up? Um, well, my boyfriend and I have been together for quite some time. How long? Um, about, well... We've, he's been my boyfriend for about seven months, but um, we've been, like, seeing each other, like, sleeping with each other and stuff for, like, three years. Hmm. So he's, he's like, my best friend. We started out friends, and then it kind of, like, went from there. But, um... I don't, yeah, I don't understand so, why you've been sleeping together, and he's your best friend and stuff. It seems um, like he'd be your boyfriend. He kind of just grew on me. It, like, we could... I'm, we're gonna, I'm gonna translate that. He finally... Agreed to be your boyfriend after yeah. all this time. You wanted him to be your you wanted him to be your boyfriend all this time. I did. And why do women? I, why can't they admit that? What is so? Yeah, what is so? What is so difficult to that? <laughs> Sometimes it's the other way around. Sometimes well, no, you're not ready to it commit. Was, it was him. He was just like, I don't want a girlfriend. Blah blah blah, and like stupid. Wow. Oh, mm-hmm. watch, sorry. Watch the language. Sorry, sorry. I have a very bad mouth. I'm sorry. How does that? Uh, your brain's not great either, man. With, with no. the, uh, well, I just mean the part where he grew on you. No, well, because we were, we would see other people. We weren't like, Look, she's okay. Just, she's BS. Right. right. Yeah. Yeah. Who are you talking to, baby? Just a messed up, we yeah. had a messed up Yeah, thing. it's fine. Right. Just say it was messed up for you. Anyways, he's my boyfriend. And by the way, Jennifer, not messed up as far as he was concerned. He probably was just exactly what he wanted. Um, yeah, probably. All right. So, let, look, just look at that reality. That's what was going on. Okay, so point being, we do pretty much everything, um, sex-wise. Mm-hmm. He um, he likes to have anal sex, 
And shocking. Dynamite guy. <laughs> it's shocking that this young gent would be that, interested in that. But that, that's, um, I mean, and it, it was, okay, like, I agreed to do it with him because... Because you want, yeah, you, you needed a you needed a boyfriend. Well, it's that's part of what. Well, no, this was when he was growing on you. That's one boyfriend. of the things, right? No. Yeah, but you know, in order to keep him your boyfriend, you got to make sure he's happy, right? Mm, no, not really. It was it that never really came to. Right. What well, we why why did, why do you do it? Why did you do it if you didn't want to do it? Well, no, because I was like, okay, we can try new things. But this was this we, uh, the first time we actually had sex that way was. Not too long ago. All right. And um, he uh, a year he liked it, and the first time was it was pretty bad for me. I, you know, that was like the first time I ever did that, right. and um, like it was it hurt a lot. So right. um, I told him we weren't gonna do that anymore, and he was like, "That's fine, you know, it, it, if it's if it's that uncomfortable, and you know, this and that." So we we didn't do it again for a long time, and then I had again agreed. Yeah, you know, let's we can do it. That's fine. You and again so he, agreed, or he he bugged on you. He hammered you. No, know, he was like, well, you know, he asked. He didn't like push it and say, come on, come on, let's let's. And you know, he had asked, and I said, yeah, you know, that's fine. Mm -hmm. So we we did it again, and that time wasn't so bad. Right. So I was like, well, maybe I just had to, you know, fill it the first time, and then the second time wouldn't be, you know, like. Uh, yeah, yeah, maybe I had a bad hoagie the first time. Or <laughs> yeah, something. I don't know. You never so, know. You never know. It happened to me once. Had a so, uh, um, manny sandwich. Uh, yeah, that, I just, they, we put the coleslaw right on the bread, right on the bread. Four or five times, and, like, the other, the last couple of times it's been bad. Like, I just can't take it. It's not something. All right, like, so what's the question? My question is if it's just, like, people shouldn't do that. That's right. People that have pain shouldn't do that. Exit okay. only. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even like crapping out of my ass, to tell you the truth. I'm, that, I'm, I'm against anything being in there. I don't like okay. it when it's dilated. Yeah. I'm trying to figure out a way not to crap out of my ass. <laughs> Grow your hair out a little longer, it won't come out. How That's dare right. you, true. <laughs> Adam was once described as trying to find his anus as looking for a Santa Claus's mouth. <laughs> I described it that way. That's what I said. Right. Adam described. Oh, I thought you said Adam's <laughs> no, name has no. once been described. <laughs> hey, hey, Jennifer? Yes. Where's your dad? My dad is probably about two blocks away from me. Yeah. yeah. You, know, you, you live that close to the prison? <laughs> no. No, no. No, he's not in prison. I see. And is he a good dad? Yeah, he's a very good father. He takes care of you? He loves you? Um, yeah. Well, I mean, my parents are divorced because they didn't have a You know what? I, I just get Jennifer sort of frightened and confused and does not yeah. stand up for herself. Yeah. You, you, Jennifer, it's all right to say no to this, all right? It's, we give you permission. you got to stand up for yourself before you can't sit down. That's right. That's uh, that's Stand up before message. you can't sit down. That's right. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> if, if you don't stand up for yourself... You ain't sitting down. You ain't sitting down. That's Drew's uh, anal sex public service announcement. Mm -hmm. Lovely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's nice, huh? Brought by Trojan. <laughs> <laughs> Taylor Ray? Hey. Hey, you're 21. 21 years old. That's right. What's up? I just wanted to know, um, how do you feel about girls being in the industry? And guys, too, whatever. Being uh, being in the the adult adult, adult film industry. Yes. I've been in it for like a year and a couple months, so I just wanted to know how you feel. Mm -hmm. Well, I we mean, uh, I'm all for it, but I, I wouldn't want to wouldn't want to marry one of them, you know. <laughs> well, I'm actually married. I just got married like six months ago. I've been with a guy for four years. Yeah. And it's fine. We like have an agreement, you know. Yeah. But I just, you know, do you think it's good for me though? Like. No, it no. is not good. He healthy, emotional people don't typically do that. Uh, but and it, it creates tons of problems. Yeah, tons when I say I wouldn't want to marry you think so this, though? because I mean, yeah. all the people in the industry—they're like the best people I've met. I'm not saying I'm not saying they're bad people, but that you yeah. want take a look at their relationships and see what starts to happen to them. Well, what do you yeah. What do you do? You make movies. I do movies. I was in Hustler magazine. Um, it's still out. It's the February issue, 2003. Oh, we'll have to look for you. <laughs> uh, rain. You're the uh, you're the uh, chick who's peeing on the other chick, or. Uh, no, it's actually a boy-girl scene. Uh, yeah, I was peeing in the pool. It was actually like a pool scene. You didn't do peeing in the pool? 
plus peeing in the pool. You're giving him credit for knowing that somebody would be peeing in the, in the shoes. <laughs> yeah, you do. I'm clairvoyant. <laughs> and uh, you did a boy-girl scene? Yes. And your husband, what does he do? Is he in the industry? No, he's not in the industry. Rabbi? What's what? he do? What does he do? He does security. He does security? Yes. All right, and <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm just playing a hunch, Drew. You know, <laughs> many rabbis. Well, I do are, like yeah. DPs and anal and everything. D, uh, Is that good for my body or? Let's see, I mean, anal. What, uh, what's that? Uh, what's the DP? Double penetration. Oh, double, double penetration. Pay. Wow. Yeah. Double pay. <laughs> are you? you know. <laughs> well, here, here's the deal. Um, that typically people that gravitate to these kinds of occupations by you know pastimes have a trauma history uh, a and you look ask around you'll see that that's pretty much nearly universal well don't ask around that's a boner killer on this <laughs> <set>. <laughs> but you that, that it's my background history i'm yeah. just telling you that's you ask around you'll find people have similar trauma histories to your own and it is a, an acting out of of the consequences of that trauma that what it relieves residually on your brain gets reinforced by the behaviors that you're now acting out. It doesn't, it doesn't help resolve them. It sort of entrenches them. Yeah. It makes them worse. Is, uh, you know, I just thought it would be funny when she was talking about DP, which is uh, double penetration, but on, on many movie sets it means a director of photography, <laughs> so it could It'd be a funny little scenario. It'd be a funny little sketch. You know what I mean? You want to confuse your DP? Yes, yes, I am. I'm your man. <laughs> All right, <laughs> uh, drop your pants Action. and get over there. <laughs> what what uh, are they? Are they when they say double penetration? What are they talking about? I think they're talking both about holes, a uh, yeah, both holes down below the waist. Stud, yeah. ne stud in each muffin. Yeah. Not 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 in the mouth. No, that doesn't no, that no. doesn't count, Drew. No, well, I beg your pardon. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, I'm all what? knowledgeable about this subject. <laughs> so no. young, so no, naive, Drew. Taylor? Yes? Yeah, now DP is uh, one in each hole, right? Yeah. But... At the same time. Yeah, and then if, if there was uh, another penis, let's say, in your mouth, what, that, would that be called anything? Or? TP? TP. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I, I remember, no, Red Light District did. I forget what it's called. Yeah. Three, you're totally full. All mouths are full. All holes are filled. I guess. Yeah. I did that already. <laughs> you did the three. You did the uh, did TP. Three. I've done three guys. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So, did you have a little uh, abuse when you were younger? No, not at all. Like my parents are divorced. Typical type of thing. And like, I don't really like my mom. My dad's cool. And what was wrong with your mom? Oh, I don't know. She's cool. She just doesn't really accept the industry thing. She, like, didn't talk to me for a little bit for, like, a year. Mm -hmm. Now we just started talking a month ago, and she's fine with it. Now she's asking a little more questions about it. So, sweetie, wait, wait, wait. If you've done a DP, hold on. <laughs> Aunt Connie wants to hear about the DP. Sweetie, DPs what is... These are fun. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Now, okay, now hold on a second. Now, look, Taylor says, you know, typical family, everyone gets divorced. Not, not nuts about mom, but dad's a great guy. I mean, many, many people would have this story at first glance. It's not the story. Okay, now, could the story be some drugs uh -huh. as an adult? Yeah. Could, could that have a brain tumor or something? I mean, no, no. <laughs> but could no? some mom or dad's an addict? BT, brain tumor? Mm -hmm. Taylor? Yes. Uh, you into drugs? Uh, no, I just quit. I just smoke pot and drink. I was in drugs. I didn't went to rehab for it. Like, it is. So you're all no, better now. And which which of your parents was an addict? Uh, my dad was and my mom was. Both. My, Both. my dad Both. was a cocaine addict and okay. he quit and he hasn't done it for like 10 years. All right. Well, when, when, I was I, little, when I was talking about trauma, being in a addicted family with two parents addicted, that that's traumatic, okay? You think so, though? Like, really, we're, like, stronger people than that. You know, it's not really that Yeah, bad. well, it's uh, the way the human brain works, unfortunately, Taylor. It leaves residual wiring behind. And in yeah. uh, being an addict, sex addiction is part of the addictive syndrome. Uh, you, you really, I, I guarantee you, if you were talking to your sponsor about what you're up to, it would not go over too great. And, um, you know, you might want to look into the uh, addiction treatment center at uh, Del Lamo. There's a Dr. Seeley down there that deals with this stuff an awful lot. All right, that's uh, Delamo. Where's that? In South Bay. South Bay. Isn't Hawthorne. It? All right, there you go there. I was hoping it started with a P, so it could be another DP. <laughs>
It's, uh, you know, you, you try. Sometimes yeah, you roll the dice because it's work. snake eyes. All right, so Taylor is uh, calling to say that this is fine. Yeah. She sounded dynamite. It sounded like she had her head screwed mm. on straight. Mm. Yeah. She, yeah. She sounded a little wanky, right? Mm. She, was she high now? Mm. And by the way, you, you go through drug rehab and you're just doing a little weed and a little booze. That, that's not a great sign, is it? No. Not he, 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 that's not recorded, no. Uh, but here's, here's what I hate. People go, how dare you judge? We're not, I'm not judging. They can go do whatever they want. Here's the reality. I, I have to scrape people up like Taylor Ray up the, you know, later when the disasters hit. And uh, it, is, it is a prog- going down a path that is not going to be pretty soon. Yeah, and by the way, you know, parents being okay, but a little divorce, and dad's no. great. Yeah. That, that was a, Both that drug was a coke addict. Both drug addicts. Yeah, that's, not, a that's not, not great for the kids. Rachel? God bless her for not holding it against him, though. Yeah. This guy really dodged a bullet. Yeah, but you know what? The, you know, as you and I know, the most abusive parents are the ones that the kids still idealize. That's true. Rachel? Flute. Here. Oh, she got yeah. a good... She's <laughs> on hold for uh, 61 minutes and 39 seconds. She's from Minnesota. Oh, my girl. It's a little late over there. What is it? Is it three hours over there? Two. Two. No, uh... No greater tribute could be paid to the host of the radio show than uh, sawing logs. <laughs> Should we scream really loud? It's Minnesota. It's probably heavy set. You know, they, hey not, not you. Well, you moved hey out of there. Now. But they, they're growing big over there. Yeah, they do. And they, they, they got a little respiratory situation over <laughs> there, most, too. Yeah, most seven-year-old females don't, don't breathe like that when they sleep. No, you can't hear them. Yeah. That's not true. No, they, the males we hear. Yeah. I'm a little bit of a snorer. Do you? A little bit. Yeah. Little bit. Nothing thing. really bad. <laughs> I don't wake up any funny, I don't think. Well let's uh <sighs> let's check back in with Rachel, see if she's sleeping. Yeah, keep throughout yeah. the night. Yeah, of course. God bless yeah. her for falling asleep, but the phone's still perched <laughs> up there too. Like at a certain point, doesn't that phone sort of slip out of your hand? Oh eventually, yeah. It drops to the floor. Such a compliment for the show though. Yeah. <laughs> I know. She loves it. <laughs> <laughs> it's always funny. Teresa? Yes. Remember the security guard we used to... T- You're 26. Yeah, we used to have a security guy who used to just uh, sprawl out on the sofa out in the lobby and just... Uh, <laughs> yeah, I would s- crawl out on his stomach s- with a microphone. That's awesome. He, 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 used to, he used to saw novelty logs out there, like like three stooges snoring out there. I mean, he was credible snoring. That's, like that that's a the sound of it. It sounded like horse shack laughing. And, uh, yeah, we used to, we used to, I used to catch him out there mm. snoring, and so I'd sneak out there with the microphone. we get about 30 feet of mic cord, and I'd <laughs> crawl out there in my belly, commando style, and I'd be <laughs> slipping around the thing with the mic. And, I, you, you know, you know, inevitably, he'd always, like, move around. <laughs> you know, he'd shift around. He was a big guy. I was scared. You know, he, he, he could just pull this gun out and shot me, you know, just in half... <laughs> Having some Have crazy sleep, yeah. dreams, some race riots yeah. going That's on right. or something. See some crazy kid with a Brillo head and a microphone crawling out there. Hmm. But he crawled out there and put it out there. And we, he was sawing logs pretty good. Then I think he got fired because of that, right? <laughs> yeah. But then he came back. Yeah. And then wow. he fell asleep again. Yeah. And then he got fired again. And then I did it again. I don't know what the lesson is. <laughs> 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 Teresa? Yes? You're 26. I'm 26, yes. Yeah. What's up? Well, let's see. I'm an embalming student. I was out doing an embalming one day. Um, after we had come through formaldehyde through and we were uh, sewing up the body, I poked myself with the needle mm-hmm. that we were using to sew up. Um, about a week before I got my third hepatitis B shot, so I'm wondering... Your first you, one? No, I'm sorry, my third. Third one, okay. I my third hepatitis B How shot. How many did you get? Three? Three, yeah. Three. You need three, yeah. So you, got a, you don't know if you're a responder yet, though. No, so. I go back in about two weeks to see if I have the antibodies. So. How long has this person been dead? You know what, um, I think I've been dead for about three days, the refrigerator for one. You know, I don't know how long these viral illnesses live in a, in a dead body. I know that when, you know, we were doing dissections and stuff, people always worried about prion diseases. What's prion? Mm-hmm. Which is uh, like uh, uh, mad cow disease, basically. Jakob right. Jak- Jak- Kreutzfeldt disease. Because the prions basically is a, is a replicating protein. It's not even a living thing. Mm-hmm. It's a strange, they don't really understand it fully. And uh, they can live on and on and on, even in the formaldehyde. You know, pickled body. So, so this is sort of undertaking stuff. Mm-hmm. Yes, it is. <laughs> and is it a family business? No, I'm going to mortuary school so that when I'm out, I get my license and do my internship, and then 
move on from there. Is it a decent gig? You make some money doing that? Yeah, well, you know, out, out west in Arizona, it's mostly about cremations, but back east is where the big money is. That's where the mortuary <laughs> money is? Yeah. What, what, when did you decide you wanted to go into this? Um, I actually started out to be a coroner, and I decided I want to go through the medical school about halfway through. So mm -hmm. uh, being a mortician, I figured it was the next best step. So, so uh, how, we, we, we've discussed this, but I'm, I'm always interested in this. I'm fascinated by this. And we've discussed it before, but I still don't completely know what the standard procedure is. If a, if a body comes in there and the uh, family says uh, that they'd like to give the person like an open casket kind of thing and sort of present the body, what is involved then? Well, uh, most of the time we do embalmings. Um, it's less than from the Jewish faith. There's no embalming, or no embalming there. Right. It's against the religion. Yeah. But we would do the full embalming, set the features, make sure that, you know, the fluid's gone through all the body set before. The, set the features. Uh-huh. Meaning that you close the eyes, you put the eye caps in so they don't look so sunken in. You wire the mouth shut. You you put the you put the caps in under the lids so yeah. they don't so they're like wow. contact lenses with hooks so it mm. catches inside the lens uh, of the lids with hooks right <laughs> so so it doesn't because otherwise the eyes will sort of sink in mm -hmm. and they will sort of make a divot or something. They just yeah, look if they, if, looks uh -huh, different. if they don't sink in, they might stay open. Okay, so uh, mm. you put the caps in. They got the hook. Uh huh. Put the caps in. They and and then now do you, do you drain the body of all its blood? We do that after, after we set the features. Because if oh, really? You leave, yeah, if you were to leave the eyes and the mouth open and then do the embalming first, their face would freeze that way, and it'd be really hard to close your mouth. And right. And you uh, sort of have to sew the mouth shut? Mm -hmm. No, what we do, we use needle injector, just like a little screw that's attached to wire, mm -hmm. and you put it in. It's kind of like an air gun to uh, hammer it into the upper and lower gums. And mm -hmm. once those two are in, you just close the wire shut and uh. tuck the extra underneath their teeth. Right. Now I'm a mouth breather, so I'd probably... Oh, no, wait a minute. That's right. I still get the feeling like my mouth open as I, they lowered me into the grave, just don't, in case. Don't they train you on what to watch out for from an infectious disease standpoint? They do. In fact, when they, um, it was a really small poke. I didn't know it really poked me until I felt something coming through my glove. It was because I was pushing on my hand to see if I punctured the wound. Well, I, I would imagine yeah. the things you'd be most concerned about would be prion and hepatitis C. Yeah, because nope. hepatitis C yeah. and tuberculosis. Right. Listen, I, I'm not. I'm. I'm. I'm mildly concerned with your health, but I'm more. Oh. I'm more interested in the process <laughs> here. And do you, so you. Uh, you do all this stuff. You do. You set the. Lindsay's features. freaking out here. I'm she's, a little freaked she's, out. She's, right I, now. I can see her. She's like <laughs> shifting back. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I've done it so many times. Uh, after you set the features, you go ahead and you make a decision for the corroded artery. In the right. Neck. In the neck. Now, what about the uh, on the male? What about the jumps? <laughs> uh, what if what if he dresses to the left, like Drew? Is that? I don't know. We just cover that up, so we want to look at it. You cover that up, and uh, you up, you, yeah. you put you uh, make an incision on the neck. Uh huh. And you go ahead and put in the um, cannulas, which pumps the fluid in and, and helps to pump it out of the vein. So now, don't mm -hmm. you have to have an opening uh, to let it out? Uh huh. It's going to be in the same incision. In fact, you cut the um, jugular artery and the vein at the same time. So you got two different um, cuts in there. Right, so and you, you, you start pumping in the embalming fluid and... Into and the artery and it, come, it pushes its way through and comes and, off. And, and, and so, so what's coming out is blood for yeah, blood a, quite some and time and, and, yeah. until you get the fluid. Blood and what? Uh -huh. And clot. Yeah. Right, so, so you know when the body's full because blood stops coming out and a formaldehyde starts coming out. Exactly, yeah. There's yeah, I think I could do this. <laughs> I, I mean, I already seem to... You have a little obsession with this. I know all the basics already. We you know there's times where, like, maybe the leg doesn't get um, good fluid, so we have to open up the femoral artery and sometimes right. the little artery in the in the foot, the pedis medialis. Right. All right, now... now yeah. Dorsalis pedis. All yeah, of the... Thank you. Now, let me... <laughs> <laughs> is this why she couldn't be a coroner? You know, I'm still in school. But, but let me uh, ask you this. Uh... Couldn't one put a body in the refrigerator for three, four days while they made the arrangements and everything, then just take the body out of the refrigerator and put it in the casket and present it? I mean, are flies going to be buzzing around? You know what I mean? Do you have to embalm them this way? Well, you know, it depends if they have an outside funeral, like in the heat, because Arizona gets about 120. They're going to yeah. be smelling it. You put sunblock on them? Yeah. <laughs> 
Put a little zinc oxide on the nose and some sunglasses on them. Uh Be like Weekend at Bernie's. (laughs) You know, the part that got me, I wasn't ready for this, is that after you finish pumping in the formaldehyde, you have to hydroaspirate them. And it's like this long tube with a a little arrow on it, and you stick in their stomach, and you pop all their organs, and you suck out the juices. You, you, you. You got to get the juices out of the yeah, out of the, the out. liver and the heart and everything. Yeah, I pop the heart, the lungs. Well, uh, now, the why why do you, it's like you got to it's like tapping a keg? Uh huh. <laughs> like like you got to do that? Why? <laughs> because otherwise the uh, organs will start to rot because the liquids are still in there. I know, but I, I, again, I, again, I say, like, what's the average funeral after the death? I mean, it's always, it's always that week, it's a week, five days, right? It's usually, like, let's say, happen on a Monday. Usually on on Saturday or Wednesday. It takes about three to five days. Well, what, Adam's asking why all the uh, I'm, heavy I'm involvement. S- I'm saying someone kicks off on a on a third on a Wednesday, and you're planning the funeral on a Sunday. Couldn't uh-huh. you just toss them in the refrigerator and pop them out an hour before the? You know, no, if, if, well, if, if they, it's not in the heat, if it's inside, air conditioned. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, if they stay in the fridge for a few days, it's going to take them about an hour, maybe two, to, thro- to thaw out. So that their, um, yeah, their body I'm, I'm just saying, it's going in the ground. It's, it's not like they you know, start you smelling know, you and stuff. up the funeral. And you, gotta, you, <laughs> you put them in a suit and stuff? We put them in a suit. We put underwear on them. Because oh. they have the wake the night That's before. the job you should have. Why the underwear? Why the underwear? <laughs> Because you know St. Peter's going to ask, you know, he's going to want to know. They Check, put right? thongs on all of them, so they're really uncomfortable. Lacy underwear, because she, she feels sexy that way. <laughs> Putting put the underwear on. <laughs> oh, for her, oh, Christ. For her. Yeah, I know. Oh my God. Oh my God. T- t- really, got to put underpants on? You can't just put <laughs> slacks on them. Why not? Why can't you? Put or why was on white? The, the the bottom part's never open. Why don't they just leave? Yeah. <laughs> leave them naked. Yeah, let them go commando. It's it's hot. Hot. It brings underwear, and we put him, we put it on. Here's right. everything they get. How is it that? How do you, like? I can barely put my own underpants on. You know, after a long night of drinking, <laughs> and I'm, I'm 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 compliant, but I'm trying to stand up and do it. I fall over sometimes. Like, how are you getting underpants on a you know 250 pound corpse? How many people get, does that take? You get two people, one to lift the legs and work up the body, and then when it's like a, about where the thighs are, you start rocking them back and forth and work the underwear up. God. Good times, right? And in the in the suit, you I mean it's not, you know what I mean? Like I would cut the suit along the back and sort of drape it over the person. Yeah, that's what we have to do sometimes. That's what you do, sometimes. or uh-huh. sometimes, oftentimes, you put the shirt under shirt, or it depends, I guess, if the weather's hot. <laughs> <laughs> would you put deodorant or cologne on them? No. <laughs> no, but you you would do their hair. We do their hair. We wash their bodies. We do their hair. Um, after everything's done, we go ahead and put the makeup on them and put them in the casket. Right. Now, what if a guy had a hair piece? You would make sure that was attached and in place? Yeah. Uh-huh. You super glue and keep it on. Do you super have to glue. go to beauty school to do this, too? <laughs> they show you some of that. We're, that's coming up in this next semester. We're doing facial reconstruction and cosmetology. Nice. Wow. Here we go. Okay. Back to the All right. Line. Hey, good time. Good time. <laughs> Right. What was she calling I, about? I, she wanted to know if she got pricked with a needle. Yeah. But here's, I've, I've, I've said this to Drew many times, and Drew's always agreed with me. Like, can't just, doesn't this sound sort of bizarre and barbaric at the same time? And, and yeah. like, incredibly intrusive yeah, in, yeah, in a weird way? I mean, if you can be intruded upon when you're dead, I'm not sure. But I, let, let's just say, God forbid, somebody we loved had this happen and they passed away. Would you like the idea of their sort of nude corpse and a, a couple of, Hey, Bart, get in here. Help me with this broad's leg. <laughs> She's a big one. Yeah. They're going to have to get a bottle jack up, get that big ass up to get them panties on her. <laughs> Christ. Well, it's she ought to give her bikini how wax. Wor- how weird we are about dead bodies that we're going to put under her. Yeah. Think about how weird the human is that way, right? Yeah. 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 All right. We've got to take a break. Lindsay Bartleson is our uh, guest tonight from Grounded for Life, going to the WB on the 28th of uh, she February. She is not going to sleep tonight. She's <laughs> flipped out. Vulvodynia, <laughs> vulvodynia and <laughs> popping and organs. Dead people. After this. Hey, everybody. It's Loveline. I'm Adam Corolla. It's Dr. Drew. Lindsay Bartleson is our guest tonight. She's from Grounded for Life, which is uh, currently on Fox, but it's heading over to the WB on the 28th. Oh. Mm. 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 Oh, I'm sorry. 
That's nice. It's yeah. a good times. Made tacos for breakfast this morning. Mm-hmm. Nice. Yeah. Are we down in San Diego again? No, I'm at home. Well, of course. Mm-hmm. Taco fixings. That's what the smell is. Is that what that is? Mm-hmm. Rachel? Yes, Adam. Ooh, you were asleep last time we spoke to you. I know. I'm very sorry. That's all right. At least you guys didn't, like, disconnect me or anything. No. Um, quick question, though. Is is Anderson there? No. no. Oh, okay. I was just wondering. I thought maybe he was asleep, too. No, he doesn't yes. sleep. One thing he doesn't do. Yeah. No. no, oh, you mean mean no sound effects tonight. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, Ken's in here, and uh, he's not, uh, he's just, you know, he's kind of going through the motions. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't want to get into trouble. Yeah, oh, well. Okay. Anyway. No, but that, that's Anderson's thing. He knows what all the buttons mean, you know? Sure. You see what I'm saying? Why don't you just try one? Just hit a random button? Yeah, just hit one. Go ahead, Ken. Yeah, just hit a random button. Yes. Hmm. <laughs> I hit that one last time. How many? No, how many? You, you got that 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 sound effect machine there, right? It's got all the things downloaded. Is it like one through fifty? One through twenty-five? It was hundreds and hundreds. Oh, nine hundred? Yeah. Okay, but 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 the, but the, it's it's possible combinations or something. No, no. It's like it's like there's a bank and there's like a hundred in each bank. Really? Yeah. Wow. All right. Hit uh, hit thirty-three. Pardon me. Uh, it uh, hit 250, or, or oh, it's alphabetical. It's a number and then alphabet, right? Yeah, okay, hit. two C. <laughs> <laughs> so it's always funny. F U. No, no, oh. two F. Uh, two F. <laughs> two F. So the twos are this weird sound effect. How about eight G? Eight G. I think it's one of Nothing? That's... <laughs> what is he doing on there? Ah. Someone set up a debug. <laughs> get signal. Blocked. I never heard that <laughs> one. <laughs> this is stuff Anderson uses to amuse himself late at night, I think. Yeah. yeah. It's uh, fodder for his masturbatory sessions uh-huh. that go on in the wee hours <laughs> oh, of the night no, here. No, please, too much. <laughs> All right. Back to Ra- the Rachel? Table. Yep. You have a request for a sound effect? <laughs> uh, nothing specific. All right. Well, what's your problem then? All right. Um, I masturbate um, really frequently mm-hmm. and, uh, like, at least a couple times a night. And I was hoping, um, well, for one, to cut down just because I- I'm worried I'm going to be changing my body. No. Do you have to do it in order to go to sleep? No. It just feels good. And What do you What do you use? Nothing. Nothing. My finger. His finger. Oh. <laughs> 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 no, it's fine. You're not going to hurt anything. Okay. Um. But is there any way? Like, is there like a, like a, Alan? Not Alan on it, but some program I can go through. Because I, I don't like doing it that much. R- yeah. No, really, really. When you really check yourself in somewhere, I mean, oh, you do it twice wow. a night. Why don't you cut down to once a night? Yeah. Wait, you really you think you're addicted to sex or something? Are you feeling guilty or something? Uh, no, I just, I, I, it, uh, each time I do it, it's a long time. How long? Uh, like, jeez, an hour? No. Yeah. Twice a night you do it for an hour? Yeah. Uh, I'm starting not to believe her. Why? Yeah, it just sounds not like full of crap, that's all. Hey, hey, I've been waiting a long time. How could this be crap call? I would just hang up. All right. Nah, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm not completely sold. An hour, huh? Why don't you get a vibrator? I'm only 17. I couldn't go in there by myself, could I? Nah. Yeah. Go on the web. Yeah, why don't you, uh, what do you do, what do you look at? You look at anything? Um, Women don't look at stuff. I know. <laughs> yeah, it's hard for you to imagine that. It's hard for you to imagine that. You don't look at stuff. Guys. <laughs> wow. Who do you look at? <laughs> no, I look, usually it's. Um, since I'm in Minnesota, I usually hear you guys like... You just listen to radio and masturbate? Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. You guys are her motivation. Lindsay's impressed. <laughs> All right. Uh, once a night. See if you can do it once a night. Mm-hmm. Just cut back. Yeah. Yeah? I, I still, even if she can't, technically, that's an addiction. However, really, you're not addicted unless you're trying to stop in the face of consequences. Mm-hmm. It's not really having any consequences. Yeah, but an, an hour of pop. And that's uh, that's, that's a, a lot time. of wasted time. Mm, that's a consequence. Yeah. 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 Melissa? 
Yeah. You're 23? Yes. What's up? I had sex for the first time about two days ago. Mm-hmm. And when my boyfriend and I did have sex, I tore pretty badly. Mm-hmm. And I'm worried about bacteria, infection. Wait, you said you tore pretty badly. Yeah, I've got about a half-inch tear on my vagina. And wouldn't that, uh, if you tore badly, wouldn't that take a stitch or something? Yeah. Didn't bleed? It bled for about two days, so it just stopped bleeding today. Um, uh, what do you, uh, what do you got, a vacuum cleaner running over there? I'm sorry? What's going on? So we got next to a turbine. Oh, it, it's just, I'm sorry, it's my computer, I'm doing homework. What, what do you got, one of those, uh, Radio Shack ones <laughs> from, uh, 79? It, it's an e-machine, which should explain a lot. Mm, explains nothing. What's an e-machine? <laughs> an e-machine? It's a really, really cheap computer for poor college students. Uh, oh, I see. All right. All right, so um, it's got the fan running in the background. Mm. All right, uh, Drew, what should she do? She could get some scarring or you something, know, right? Uh, very unlikely. Uh, just a hot baths, keep it clean, keep it open to air. Peroxide maybe twice a day. Oh, what, what about the tearing with the boyfriend? Is he uh, large or something? Does this go on he, for a long he time? He is very wide. Mm-hmm. Mm. And, and that is the problem. Did this go on for a long time? Or was it a long encounter? It's probably only about five minutes because mm. it hurt. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's got like a thermos. Yeah. And you can actually like. see. You, you can see it. <laughs> I, I think I could fit my penis through, uh, you know, the three-ring binder paper? <laughs> How about the, the, I r- bring the, the little itty-bitty rings? <laughs> There's like a hundred. The spiral ring. <laughs> no, not, not one of those I would tear, but I think I could su- successfully make it through the three-ring paper. Mm. You know, that's put in a three-ring binder. Yeah, yeah. And without tearing. Huh. I think I could. That's this good. is a little bit bigger. Huh. And once you use a whole punch for That's nice. Yeah, Lovely. yeah, that's good. That's solid three sixteenths. Hey, I, I want to know. Quarter I can't inch. understand why he, she's able to see this a tear there. Maybe the boyfriend there's nobody's looking at. I mean, it can be a little tearing. Could she? Others. Can 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 one uh, mm-hmm. examine one of some? You, you've rubbed. Mirror? You've you've little inside the lens. Personal, by the way. <laughs> M- mirror squatter. That was her Indian name. No. <laughs> yes. Mirror squatter. Dan- dances on mirrors. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna find it. Melissa, did you see it? Well, I'm legally blind, so I need to be about two inches away from anything I'm looking at. Uh-huh. And I'm just not that flexible. So he is looking at it, telling you. Yeah. Yeah, I got And I can tell because, you know, it, it hurts, it's bleeding. He, yeah. he told you half an inch tear. About, yeah. Maybe a little less. Yeah. Right, well, He's probably just tear. bragging on himself. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I do. He's yeah. performing a episiotomy every time he has sex with her. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Wide, huh? Mm. Yeah. Stop big man, obsessing. big man. Yeah. All right, well, uh, what, uh, well look, we can do the thing yeah, that... Hot uh, bath, peroxide. Yeah, and then clean. you can start doing the digit the thing stretching. that we learned mm-hmm. about. Yeah. Using the different fingers, mm-hmm. stretching stretch yourself out a little bit. Use some lubrication. Mm-hmm. All right. It takes a while uh, for this to heal, though. It takes a while. All right. Take a little, uh, stay off the vagina. I call it pelvic rest for a couple of weeks. Pelvic rest? Pelvic rest. I'm going on that next week. Mm. That's awesome. We'll take a little break. We'll I'm be back. i boyfriend. Hey, everybody. Love Line. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew over there. Lindsay Bartleson is our guest tonight. She's the uh, spunky redhead from Grounded for Life. And uh, that is uh, coming on... Uh, Soon to be on the WB in February on the 28th. And, uh, Friday. Friday night. All right. Let's uh, talk to uh, Melissa, who's 20. Melissa? Hi. Hey. How are you? Good. Um, I just got a question. Mm-hmm. Um, I live with this guy for like almost seven, eight months now. And I met him by my brother. And I liked him since the day I met him. And we sleep together and we do things together. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, He's saying that we're not together, we're just roommates. But everybody thinks that we're together because we do everything together and, we, you know. Yeah. How old is he? He's 25. What's your question? I just, I don't know if we're together or... <laughs> no, he's telling you you're not. Oh. Listen, just because a guy's sleeping with you, when a guy sleeps with you and says we're not together, he is making a special effort to tell you, because I'm sleeping with you doesn't mean anything. I like sleeping with you. 
I have no feelings. Guys do that. Well, no I like, problem. I like sleeping with things. I like sleeping with you. I don't like. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't want a girlfriend. I'm using you for sex. Yeah, but 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 here's where people get. I, I think here's where women get into trouble sometimes. Where I like sleeping with you. It, sometimes the you part you can't focus on too much. That's what I'm saying. I like screwing. Yes, and you have you to be there. Let me <laughs> screw you. Right. That's why I do it. It's not like I like sleeping with you per se. If you could find a, you know, if you're a good six and a half or seven, you could substitute a seven and a half or an eight, and he'd be more than happy to take her over you. Mm-hmm. Oh. Yeah, he's a delight. Yeah, but you got to listen. Now, he, you're you're falling in love with this guy, right? Yeah. Because uh, you're sleeping with him and having these activities with him. Yeah. Does he date other girls? No. He's just uh, making it clear to you. It's, like, weird because he don't sleep with other girls. I, like, met him, like, in April, and he don't sleep with any girls. or. Well, you've got you fortunately t- t- taking the wind out of his sails a little bit. Yeah. But he's telling you, he's putting you on notice that, you know. Oh, because it's like weird because um, his his friends and we, me and him will like play fight a, a lot, and we act like we're married. Melissa, yeah, you're trying to build a case here. Huh? There's no case to be built. He's told oh. you what his deal is here. Now you should feel free to tell him how you're starting to feel. Maybe, maybe he'd come around. I don't know. Yeah. It's not likely. Guys don't tend to do that. Yeah, because I think well, he told me he's like afraid of being cheated on again, and he's been cheated on so many times and I told him I was like I've been through the same thing yeah and that, that's telling him game on yeah mm-hmm. he's been cheated on so many th- I that's like, BS I, I love when yeah, guys do this yeah so I'm just gonna pork you for a while and that, that way and by the way by the way if you brought a guy home and we're banging away with him in your room he 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 could he'd, react he'd, he'd, he'd react he'd have a problem yeah, yeah. And, and listen any guy who gets cheated on a lot it's a jackass and let me tell you why. Because he's hooking up with idiots. Yeah. Uh, here's, uh, Drew, well, you and I know. So you, Show me someone who's getting cheated on a lot. I'll show you someone who's stupid and out mm-hmm. of it. And, and who's it, cheating themselves. Most of the time. But at least making bad decisions. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Show me a guy who gets cheated on a lot. I'll show you a stupid guy who's out of it, not in touch with the reality, makes a lot of bad decisions. Yes. Yeah, and also, and also, and it's, it's going after chaotic stripper types. And it's also unavailable and doesn't, you know, doesn't do give anything to the relationship. And so encourages people to, to cheat. Mm-hmm. Right. And yeah. All right. I. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't. I don't know what to do though. She's gonna have a hell of a time living with the guy. She should put her foot down. She should say. Here's, here's, but here's what's gonna happen. She's gonna say. We can't be sleeping together if we're not going to be boyfriend and girlfriend. So, and, he, and, and no more. And he'll go, well, okay, we'll just be no roommates. More, yeah. and, and then, then they'll end up. He'll, he'll have a few tall boys, get a boner, head over head over to her, her <laughs> bean bag, and it'll be like, hey, baby, that food time was built for two. And she'll be like, I, I, Craig, I said we couldn't do it. Hey, baby, I got feelings. Well, if you got feelings. Oh, he'll say anything. At that point, he'll this. say anything. And then he'll just start she rubbing She should just move out. Yes, That's the move. truth. Agreed. It's not going to work. And it, she shouldn't want it to work. John. Mm-hmm. John, you're 27. Yeah, Drew, how you doing? Good, John. What's that? Hey, I got a question to ask. If you have foreign objects in your body, like ivory, like pearl ivory, ivory will it deteriorate after years? Deteriorate? No, I got like pearls inserted in my penis. I don't you know. mean, you mean under the, the s- under the skin? You mean? Yes. I, mean, I had them for about five years now. No. They haven't bothered me. I'm just wondering if in time will they deteriorate? You like, mean you pearls, mean organic up. pearls, like from an oyster? He said no, ivory. Like ivory. There's like ivory. Like, I'm assuming like ivory that they put things in that will not break down. Yeah. But ivory breaks down. It does. Does it? I don't know. Keys, I sort of. You're soaking in it, though. But, but then, <laughs> no, it, I, I guess it doesn't completely break. I, it's it's good. Yeah. Well, what the worst case scenario, you're left with a normal penis. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean, that's the worst that could happen. I right? Swear, like it will give me like a blood disease and it'll kill me like in ten years or something. No, I don't know of anything you get from ivory. No. Nothing from ivory. No. You're right. Right. Why is it? Is your body trying to reject them? Is there something happening there locally? No, they've been acting fine. I just, I'm just curious because I'm like having like we have heart disease and cancer in our family. Are you just in recovery or something? No. 
Because people, when they can get you, they get newly you, into recovery, get into recovery? They, they start worrying about all the stuff they've done to themselves. What? Uh, how many of these pearls you have under your penis skin? Um, two of them. I have one on the bottom, about two inches back from the head, and the one on top. It goes the whole length of it. It has a tattoo on it too. Goes the whole wow. the string of pearls. Well, no, that's just one. one. How big is the pearl? Hold on a second. It's <laughs> one pearl that goes the whole length of his penis. That's not a pearl. That's it's a something shaft. different. It's a, it's a number two pencil. <laughs> It's it's not a, when when one thinks of a pearl, one thinks of small round bead. Yeah. Yeah, it's like a dice, like um, a marble, but the size of a marble on the bottom. How gonna go the length of your penis? Um, they took like a metal tube and they ran it all the way the, the whole length of it, cutting the skin underneath. So when it healed, it can move up and down on the top of it. It, so it runs up and down. Wow. Literally can move up and oh. down the length. It of rolls it. up and down. Yes. Does that do I mean, anything for you? Not for me, no. It's all a woman's pleasure. My wife loves it to death. Oh, sure. You guys don't have kids, do you? I'm a three-year-old and a six-month-old. Uh, can you please stop having kids? Please. I love, love to interview your wife and really put her on the hot seat about that. What do you do for a living, Jeff? Um, I stay home with the kids. Uh, stay home, home, Dad. What's, mom, what's Mommy do? Um, she works at Gap. She works at the Gap. Yeah, she uh, like a call center. Call center. Okay. The Gap, the clothing store? Yes. Okay, she works at the call center. Okay. I said, I know, because I've managed uh, many Gaps in my day, so <laughs> I'm quite familiar with the call center. <laughs> I, I was, I, I've always said this many times. One of the hallmarks of stupidity is mentioning things <laughs> that are specific to certain jobs that there's no nothing to do. No one would know. No, right. no one knows. And with exception of me and all my uh, specific uh, construction lingo. <laughs> That's funny. That's genius. <laughs> All right, this guy's a dad. Yeah. He's a yeah. retard. <laughs> is he a retarded guy? I mean, either he was the subject of just crazy abuse or he's just stupid. Yeah. Well, now are his sons going to see the pearls no, and is, be for, freaked forget out Forget about by his that? sons. Have time. I, if I had time, I'd tag them right now. <laughs> Put an ankle bracelet on those kids right now. Elastic, because they're growing. Yeah. Of course. All right, we'll be back. Everybody, that's the show. The great Jimmy Kimmel in here tomorrow night. He'll uh, be plugging his new show, which is uh, taking off on uh, Super Bowl Sunday. Lindsay, I want to thank you for coming in. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. Grounded for life. Going over to the WB Friday nights, starting on the 28th of uh, February. Until then, you can find it on Fox. And until next time, it's Adam Crowley for Dr. Drew saying mahalo. This has been Love Line. Opinions expressed on this show are not necessarily those of the staff, management, sponsors, or this station.